From Gabriella Dawson's father narrowly surviving a fatal attack to Herman feeling guilty for Rebecca Jones's tragic fate, here are some Chicago Fire moments that devastated fans. Starting off with the moment when Gabriella Dawson's world turned upside down as her father's life hung in balance. Honestly, season six was quite a roller coaster ride for her. She had many emotional moments when it came to her dear old father. Sometimes he'd be crashing at her place or relying on her like a safety net, and then out of the blue, he'd vanish into thin air. But hold on tight, because the tension reached its boiling point in a super intense one Chicago crossover event. So, during the episode titled A Man's Legacy, Gabby and her partner in crime solving, Sylvie Brett, were on duty when they received a distress call about a stabbing at a train platform. And guess what? When they arrived, they found an old man drenched in a pool of blood. But wait, it gets even crazier. Because as Gabby kneels down to lend a helping hand, she realizes that the man in need was none other than her own dad. Honestly, no one was prepared for this twist. Together, they rushed him to Chicago Med, where Gabby's brother Antonio gave them the scoop. Apparently, their old man stepped up like a true hero, trying to shield innocent people from a knife-wielding maniac. Thankfully, against all odds, her dad survived the gruesome stabbing, and the Dawson siblings were able to reunite with him. So after that heart-wrenching moment with Gabby and her heroic dad, Let's talk about the time when Herman forgave Cruz for a life-threatening attack. So episode nine of season four left us hanging with a jaw-dropping cliffhanger where Christopher Herman found himself on the wrong end of a knife attack. And guess what? This unfortunate incident happened at none other than Molly's. Yes, the crew's favorite hangout spot. Now fast forward to the next episode. Gabby stumbled upon a bleeding Herman on the kitchen floor of the restaurant. And without hesitation, she sprang into action and swiftly rushed him to the life-saving hands of Chicago Med. But here's where things took a heartfelt turn. As Herman fought for his life at the hospital, he had a heart-to-heart -heart with Joe Cruz. Actually, throughout the episode, Cruz was feeling guilty. He even blamed himself for introducing Freddy, the young boy who stabbed Herman to the squad. But right before getting to surgery, Herman opened up to a tearful Cruz. Chris acknowledged that Joe's investment in Freddy was a good thing. After all, it was a glimmer of hope in the boy's troubled life. Still, he made it clear that he wasn't quite ready to forgive Freddy. I mean, that's totally fair. But he wiped away Cruz's tears and refused to blame him for this ordeal. Speaking of emotional moments on Chicago Fire, it'd be a crime not to mention the team's powerful tribute to Shay, whose departure left an everlasting impact on Firehouse 51. Now, she's truly one of the most beloved and iconic characters in the show's history. Honestly, this woman was a remarkable paramedic who worked alongside Dawson during the early seasons of Fire. Unfortunately, a silly prank led to a falling out between the two, and fate had something tragic in store for them. During one fateful call, Shay fearlessly took the lead and bravely entered a burning building. But tragically, a falling pipe ended her life, despite Dawson's brave efforts to save her partner. Of course, this loss was devastating for everyone, and our hearts broke alongside Dawson's. Now, it wasn't until season three, episode 13, when the team decided to uncover the truth behind Shay's demise, and what they discovered shook them to the core. Turns out Shay had been murdered by an arsonist responsible for other heinous attacks. Obviously, this revelation sent shockwaves through Firehouse 51. And so, the squad came together, united in their grief and determination to honor Shay's memory. They dedicated an ambulance to the late paramedic and gathered for a formal ceremony, joined by Shay's sister. Frankly speaking, it was devastating to see Dawson choking up with emotions during her speech. Besides her, Chief Wallace Bowden also stepped forward to share his heartfelt words. And with that, he led the squad in salute, paying tribute to their fallen comrade. Now the team's tribute to Shay was moving, to say the least, but so was the emotional unveiling of Otis's memorial statue. I really can't forget the untimely loss of Brian Otis Zvonacek. It was undeniably one of the saddest moments in the show's history. This devastating truth was confirmed during the season eight premiere. Yep, it was the boiler explosion from the previous season's finale that left Otis with fatal injuries. Well, amidst the grief, Chief Bowden had a surprise in store for his squad, a memorial statue for Otis. 
So the team gathered for this bittersweet reveal and Chief gave a heartfelt speech before revealing the plaque. He talked about how Otis was more of a brother to him than just a co-worker, and also admired the man's true dedication to his work, saying that he was one hell of a firefighter. Honestly, I couldn't agree more. But the tribute didn't stop there. After revealing the statue, he requested the team if they see anyone standing at the memorial, one of them should come down and tell them about Brian. And with that, he placed a bronze firefighter hat on top of the statue base, which was a true symbol of his incredible connection with Otis. After this touching tribute, let's shift the focus to Severide's father's final favor. So in season seven, episode six, everyone's beloved firefighter, Kelly Severide, faced a heartbreaking revelation about his father's death. Honestly, it was such an intense situation when he had to rush to Chicago Med after learning that his father had suffered a stroke. Unfortunately, fate had other plans. Turns out his beloved father, Benjamin Severide, had passed away just moments before his arrival. Still, amidst this pain, he had a bittersweet moment. Actually, before his father's death, Kelly had pleaded with him to stand up for Chief Bowden, who was facing criticism for promoting Herman over a seemingly less qualified external candidate. And to his astonishment, he discovered that his father had indeed fulfilled his last request. It was Bowden himself who approached Kelly and revealed this news. Just imagine the emotions that must have overwhelmed Kelly at that moment. No wonder his eyes were filled with tears as he felt a sense of gratitude and pride. I mean, Benjamin's final act of goodwill showed how he was willing to do anything for the integrity of Firehouse 51. Plus, it reflected the precious bond he had with his beloved son. Now, if you thought this was intense, wait till you hear about the moment when Kelly's girlfriend, Stella Kidd, almost died. So in the second episode of season seven, Firehouse 51 faced a monumental battle against a raging 25-story building. And in this chaos, Kelly fearlessly went down the towering building to save a child. But he wasn't the only one risking it all for the sake of others. In fact, his significant other, Stella Kid, also joined their fellow 51 teammates in the search for civilians. As if the whole incident wasn't shocking enough, a few moments later, Herman emerged from the flames carrying an unconscious kid. Of course, panic swept through the whole squad as everyone rushed to her aid. I mean, Severide was trembling with worry as people told him that Stella had a pulse but no breath. What's more, he turned his anguish towards Hermann for not forcing Stella to go back. But Chris clarified that she hadn't informed him of her oxygen levels because Kid wanted to continue fighting for the sake of saving Severide. Clearly, the realization struck him about how she was selfless enough to risk her life for his sake. Luckily, the team was able to reach the hospital on time and save Stella's life. Now, besides this unfortunate incident with Stella, Herman caught himself in another emotional moment when Rebecca Jones died. Honestly, Jones's passing cast a dark shadow over Firehouse 51 and sparked a conversation about the mental health struggles faced by the first responders. But for Herman, the weight of her death was even more intense. That's because he was the last person to see her alive and he blamed himself for not being able to do anything to save her life. To be honest, Chris is one of the most emotionally vulnerable characters on the show. So it wasn't surprising when he openly expressed his grief. He talked about how he had this feeling of regret that he couldn't change Rebecca's mind. This was the moment that solidified him as one of the most compassionate and beloved characters in Chicago Fire. So there you have it, folks. From Herman feeling guilty for Rebecca Jones's tragic fate to Gabriella Dawson's father narrowly surviving a fatal attack, these were some of the most devastating moments from Chicago Fire.